Okay. All right, Manisha, you should have host capabilities. Mm -hmm. Just let me know if you have any trouble presenting. Yeah, sure. Perfect. Okay. All right. Thank you everyone so much for joining us. We have Manisha with us here today, who's going to talk all about her co-op experience and give us some tips and advice on helping to navigate the U.S. workspace. So we're really excited to learn from her and her journey, and I'm going to hand it over to Manisha to take over. Thank you so much, Kaylee. Thank you for this opportunity um, and welcome everyone for this workshop. Thank you for taking out some time and hope you all are well. Uh, let me quickly start presenting my screen. Perfect. Um, so yeah, we'll start by talking and knowing a little bit about me. Uh, then how my co-op search was and uh, the tips that helped me uh, make the a resume that could get me selected, some interview tips, um, the work culture that I have uh, seen and how it has transformed uh, my experience. Uh, then how could I apply these skills that I learned throughout my co-op? And then finally, we'll be open to questions. Uh, so stay with me and let's see uh, how it goes. Um, so a little bit about me. Uh, my name is Manisha Iyer and I'm from India, Mumbai specifically. I'm a South Indian and I've uh, been uh, born in Gujarat. Uh, so my obsession with traveling comes from there probably. And I love driving because uh, that's very therapeutic for me. And uh, I've worked over three years in a company called Reliance in India, uh, which uh, my role was specific to data analyst and business analyst um, specifically. Um, I love playing chess and um, loves painting in my free time. Uh, you guys can connect with me with the links provided below. Let's get started with our uh, next topic that would be co-op search. Uh, the thing is a uh, co-op search could be very daunting and it could be really stressful but uh, staying organized and disciplined really helped me a lot uh, staying organized in a sense wherein we could uh, meditate every day or uh, keeping a track of how many applications we have done so that we know that uh, we have been on track and there could be days when we are not that positive about all of this but keep going and keep applying, uh, help uh, staying organized for me. Applications, yes. Uh, I started the entire applications process uh, somewhere in November or Dece December 2021. And uh, it's a very long process, uh, applying, getting an interview, cracking the interview rounds, and finally landing a co-op. But uh, starting early really helps because I started in November or December and I saw that I uh, I was already a little late because many of my friends during my uh, batch started somewhere around October. And uh, that, that really gives you an edge because uh, usually the companies uh, uh, post really early for the summer or fall co-ops. And if it's spring, then somewhere around uh, before summer or spring, you should start applying. Almost keep like six to eight months in uh, gap. Um, yeah, so start early. Uh, it really gives you an edge. The third thing that's really important is building connections. As soon as you are here, you should uh, know that entire thing in US works on connections. And it's really helpful to maintain genuine, honest uh, connections and net start networking. Uh, increase your reach, uh, talk to as many people as possible. That gives you so much of insight about how this industry works. Or uh, you could really be connected to your passion, know about uh, how they work in the industry, in the area that you are really inclined in. So build connections, talk to as many people as possible. Uh, so in case, once you start getting calls or once your resume starts uh, picking up, 
always make sure to send a thank you note, uh, just a personal reply because there would be probably interviewing hundreds of people and probably not everyone is taking that effort to send a thank you that they took time to interview you or you got your first round uh, selected and everything just just make sure that you send a follow-up or a thank you mail and even if you're not selected just maintain that relationship with the recruiter and do follow up or do send a thank you note um, this entire process is very long, so be open-minded to many, many opportunities. Uh, keep open, uh, keep your uh, uh, your um, your interests uh, wide open, um, at least so that you can always choose what you want to do once you have done and you don't like it. So uh, be open-minded and be open-minded to opportunities to the different industries or different roles so that it really gives you a vision and idea about how you actually want to take it forward. Coming to the resume building, um, tailor your resume role according to the role and the industry so that uh, it really helps to uh, get an insight about how uh, the the company would really would be interested in knowing what uh, projects or what uh, experience you have regarding to the specific role and uh, always proofread your resume i cannot stress this enough because uh, i made a mistake once um, and my friend pointed it out of uh, to me when i asked for a referral that probably your uh, phone number is wrong and it's a uh, very very uh, like bad experience if you would miss out an opportunity because of uh, some silly mistake that you do in your resume. So always proofread and understand the job requirements very carefully. There in a world wherein we can take help from chat GPT for preparing our resumes and everything. Um, always read it first and yourself. What if the skills mentioned in the job descriptions are not really aligned to your interest? Uh, I'm applying to business uh, uh, intelligence analyst or data analyst kind of roles. And if I see that there are a ton of programming languages that they're expecting from this candidate, I would be wasting my time in editing the entire resume and applying when I'm probably not even inclined towards it. So just read it properly so that you know uh, what, what do you exactly want to do. And include the skills and the projects that are relevant to the company's uh, what they're looking for. They probably want someone who has uh, knowledge about, uh, uh, for example, in data specifically, they want someone who knows Tableau dashboards and stuff. So include uh, skills that showcases that. They want to see that. So just give them what they want. Um, regarding the interview, once you have landed an interview call, get to know as much as possible from the uh, people, for research about the company via their site, know about their mission, uh, connect to people in the department that you would be probably working in, what they're working in, which project is important. Just getting to know this really helps in talking about it during the interview because they already know that you are, you are really interested and uh, uh, it really gives you an edge. Then. The second thing is uh, prepare your answers in a way wherein you specify uh, what is the change that you brought in your previous role of which about the question that they're asking in. Like, for example, answer it in a format. It is very widely accepted, the STAR methodology, uh, which goes by like uh, situation, task, action, and results. Just let them know about a situation wherein uh, what role did you play in that situation? How did you uh, took up that task and changed into an actionable, uh, with your actions, how did you change the result? Um, so you can just probably, I was working in a, uh, uh, in a firm called Orbindo Pharma during my co-op and uh, it, I was working in a supply chain department specifically. And uh, they were using really traditional methods like MS Access and Excel to, uh, to read about the data, to uh, perform certain tasks that they do every other day. So um, 
with how did I change this entire situation? The task that I took up is uh, make it all very fast. How uh, I prepared a Python script so that uh, that could make the entire it could remove an entire human's uh, need for. For example, if you are doing it in Excel, it takes up a lot of time and you have to be present. When there's a Python script running in the background, probably you might not even be required to give your time input or anything. So I changed um, this situation and made the entire process faster by uh, providing uh, Python scripts and uh, that saved up almost 100 hours a month. So you could answer it in an like a, uh, elaborated way, uh, but using this methodology, it could really help. I, it helped me definitely. Uh, the third thing that's really important is practice answers. There are definitely certain questions that are uh, commonly asked and uh, it's better as much as you talk and you practice, you would be very confident with the answers. So I would suggest talk to uh, your friends or I used a tool called Big Interview. It's provided by NU itself and it really helps to record and know which direction you're going in so that you don't fumble much and look confident during an interview. So it really helps. The last thing is be really confident. Show that you are worth it because uh, one, believe in yourself that you are worth it and they really would appreciate uh, someone who is honest and uh, tells them everything confidently. So, yeah. Hi, hey, Manisha, we have one question in the chat. So one of the students asked, I will be applying for internships for spring 2024, but currently mm -hmm. I don't see any companies posting the jobs for spring. They can only see fall openings as of right now. They're mm -hmm. asking, do you think it's late to apply if it's only five months left before the spring semester starts or they still have time? Uh, I would suggest that you start now as early as possible because uh, even though it's not very late, uh, the entire process take, would take a lot of time. So uh, I could see, so I'm applying for full-time opportunities and I see summer 2024 openings for internships and co-ops. So start putting up, start searching for companies who are ready to hire, who, because if you would be the first ones to apply, some companies have rolling applications as we know. So they would roll out these opportunities time and again, but if they fill up faster, you probably would miss out on opportunities. I would suggest that uh, you start in really quick. Thank you, Manisha. And if there are any other questions, please continue to put them in the chat and we'll answer them as they come in. Thank you so much. Yeah, perfect. Um, so yeah, uh, little bit about the co-op journey. Uh, so I was working for this company called Orbindo Pharma. Uh, it's a pharmaceutical company, uh, Indian based, and it's the one of the huge distributor in US regarding all the medicines they import from uh, India and then distribute it over here. They're one of the major clients were McKesson, Walgreens, and so on and so forth, ABC. Uh, so yeah, uh, my manager was an American and I could see a work culture that's being practiced here. And this is my first hand information. Uh, one thing that's very uh, unique is the inclusion and the diversity that they appreciate. They really are very sweet to you. They really would want, uh, they understand that we'll be very uh, nervous and uh, it's, it's our probably first job in US, right? It, it's not easy once you have cracked it. So they make you feel at ease. They let you in. Uh, they make you feel included. So yeah. Uh, the second important thing that I've uh, realized here is work-life balance. You have worked for almost five, six months and imagine that you won't be able to uh, enjoy your weekends. No, that's not going to happen here. Best thing is you would be getting your work-life balanced here. Uh, this is at least what I have uh, experienced. Uh, Nobody really bothers you from Friday 5 p.m. to Monday 8 a.m. And you could work hard and party harder, literally. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, third important thing is keep open communication. Ask 
enough questions it's our first job we might not know everything ask for mentors um i i have realized that uh people have asked uh, on the first day about who is going to mentor me who i can reach out to ask silliest questions it's okay it's fine they will always answer with a smile they uh, won't ever judge you for your questions so keep an open question provide feedbacks provide your uh, innovative thoughts ideas everything they'll accept it they'll uh, they'll give their point of view and try to accommodate as much as possible uh you always also learn that uh, how do you work in a professional as a, a professional environment in here so you develop a specific skills you learn to communicate with your managers or higher ups uh, even the c suits or d suits if like if it's actually possible so you learn how to communicate how to behave how to uh, navigate through the professional environment so that's amazing uh, feature to put in your toolbox uh, then team collaboration is highly highly encouraged they uh, they encourage a amazing uh, knowledge transfer and they always want to learn from you and wants to provide feedback so that it's give and take and they love that uh, we could work in a team and provide as much as input as a team possible um the few best practices that really helped me uh, reaching on time for any meeting just be present 5 minutes early it's nothing to harm right you could uh, carry out all the tasks at least 5 minutes before be calm and be punctual so punctuality is really really appreciated so be punctual uh, professionalism yes um be prepared on time uh, wear proper clothes to office proper certain maintain proper uh, code of conduct so that uh, it's always uh, pleasant to see and talk and be approachable to people so it really helps in building uh, your professionalism manners and everything and also it's uh better for them to uh include you easily uh be accountable uh take initiatives talk to people uh whatever work you have taken in your plate uh make sure that you do it with full honesty and provide accountability provide proper timelines maintain uh excel sheet or anything that could uh, note all your tasks that you have done during the day or week however suits the best for you uh respect hierarchical structure May, know that there is your manager and then the higher up so don't jump it doesn't really go well uh, unless you have to uh talk to hr if you have to if there's any issue with the manager or anything just don't jump directly a uh, step so that uh it won't be any more cordial or anything so just maintain that and be adaptable be flexible uh go with an open mind to learn and uh, provide as much knowledge uh you like it's it's your time to experience and work so make the most out of it um yeah that's what i'll say then um uh, i hope the entire experience would help you build lot of confidence as you would have sat with your managers you would have talked so much you would have gained insights you have your experience counted now as you have done your co-op so it definitely should build your confidence according to me then your communication skills improves you you know what to talk when and how to talk uh so you cannot really randomly like you can always look for people if they are free how how they are behaving you learn so many things by just looking at people how how are the things working in there so yeah and then the professional etiquette uh uh you learn this feature as well how to be presentable how to uh you build confidence while uh, attending meetings presenting and yeah and the last is career decision making so after this co-op 
you will definitely have one of the answers that you really like this path or no and that itself is a very big deal because in the start i was clueless about uh, where i'm going and is it the right direction that i want to really continue for the longest period of my life i know i'll be working so do i want to work in this sector or not at all so it really helped me uh, make a decision that yes i want to be a business intelligence analyst or a data analyst and i love this path so that really helps to make a decision i've seen so many people who have switched their career after they go because they really didn't enjoy what they were working on so it definitely provides an insight and helps you decide that uh, do you want to continue or not and finally uh, it's about my co-op search journey um somewhere around december i started this process it took almost 6 to 7 months december actually somewhere mid november i realized that i should start so yeah i started in december i had an inclination towards uh, learning python i had worked 3 years on sql and tableau so i wanted to learn about python so in november i realized that i have to start for all of this and i need to gain knowledge for it i took up this course in uh, my spring semester uh, the uh, data science engineering methods and tools by professor dino wherein um, i could learn about python and for self learning i started uh, doing edabit uh, it's a it's a, a website wherein i could solve python problems and i took this ds course uh, for sql i realized that i need to keep practicing or i was losing my touch uh so i practiced in using hacker rank i did some of the lead code questions as well and even mode analytics is an amazing platform to practice sql questions uh the last was uh, tableau i enjoy doing tableau visualizations it it really gets uh you help help you to decide and derive insights and make informed decisions about uh where the entire process is going how is the company or the department working what's the direction are we going in the direction or not it can help you uh, like analyze the past as well as it can help you forecast as well so i love uh, creating visualizations so i practiced using kaggle and uh, data camp i downloaded the data from there and then uh, created uh, tableau visualizations somewhere around april uh, which was again very late but i started building my uh, linkedin connecting to as many people as possible i started networking uh, i applied to few companies through new works as well and i landed two or three interviews from new works but uh, it didn't went through uh, somehow after a couple of rounds i realized that they wanted someone immediately after the co-op so it didn't work um, but nevertheless i feel i still made a connect with that recruiter and it really helps so yeah there are multiple job boards apart from linkedin there is google jobs there is just so many options glassdoor and so and so forth indeed etc so use all of the sites it's not necessary that everything just comes to linkedin actually the best thing would be going to the company's portal and applying see and read the job description and apply through their company itself and for preparing through my interview process i always leaned on to big interview uh, there were times when even my friends were preparing so they could be busy with some other process or something so i made sure that i practice myself so i recorded using big interview it's a tool i mentioned before as well and it's provided by northeastern so you can uh, sign up and start using it prepare interview questions reach out to co-op advisors for advices regarding uh, how's your resume looking how just have a second opinion from co-op advisors from your friends or whoever you think is worthy and is in a position that could help you and they are in a better position specifically and uh, yeah and finally i used the notes prepared uh, while i was solving 
SQL or Python or even Tableau. I noticed certain new things. So I used to always make notes of it. And I use that during my interview so that I it's it's always possible that you forget. But having these notes handy really helps. So yeah, that was my co-op's journey. And uh, for my uh, job interview, I somewhere uh, landed my first call in on 1st of July. And I started the job on 25th of July. Uh, so the first call was just telephonic interview, like how my past journey and my three years of work experience, knowing about everything that I've done, my projects. And there was another call of interview, a video interview, wherein they uh, even tested my SQL skills and Tableau skills because uh, they were using MS Access at that time. And uh, slowly they are now, by the end of my term in uh, somewhere in December 2022, uh, my co-op term, they started switching to SQL. So they wanted someone who had experience or they, they even uh, had a couple of questions regarding the SQL and the sec after the second round, I was uh, told that I, I really got that in the offer. So yeah, that was my entire co-op search journey. Um, open to questions. Let me know if you guys have any specific questions that you want to know. Thank you so much, Manisha. Yes, if there's any questions, again, please feel free to put them in the chat or you can unmute if you'd like as well. Uh, you know, Manisha, thank you so much for sharing your co-op journey with us and giving us all the insights to working in a U.S. space and how you ended up getting there and mm -hmm. just really your process for securing your co-op. So thank you so much for taking the time to share all those wonderful things with definitely. us. Definitely, <laughs> definitely. Thank you so much, Kelly, again for this opportunity. Thank you. We're so happy to have you. So <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> Yeah, I'll, I'll ask a question to start off just in case anyone has one. Yeah. So since you are in the, the data space, what do you think um, are like some of the top questions you get asked that you think people should really be prepared for to be successful in those co-op interviews? So I could tell from my experience that I had just a couple of questions and they really wanted to know how well I know about SQL and um, so there are multiple things, for example, procedures, views, and joins. So majority of the questions start from being very easy, like write a simple select question to uh, join two tables. How would you connect this data with the other data having a common point? Or how could you create a report out of SQL? So that was majorly majorly about SQL. And for Tableau, they asked about uh, how, how specifically you could, what are the things that Tableau have or what exactly feature really helped you create an insight? So having, to, knowing at least the basics and then stepping up to intermediate level would really help. And I would say that hacker, solving hacker and questions really helped me and even lead code. Lead code sometimes becomes very heavy on you. So it's like, uh, it's already a pressure, like uh, hearing about lead code from software engineer friends, it's already a pressure. So uh, going to lead code slowly would help having a uh, solved hacker rank and mode analytics really helped me. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, of course. Okay, are there any other questions? It looks like that's all the questions we have. So if you do have any other questions that come up, um, I know, Manisha, if you want to go back to your slide with your um, kind of yeah. connection QR codes. Yeah. So I know Manisha would be more than happy to answer Definitely. questions over LinkedIn or email if any do come up. Um, yeah. And just thank you again for everyone who joined, who took time out of their day to hear Manisha's story and really spend time with us. And again, thank you so much, Manisha, as well, for taking the time to make this wonderful presentation and share your journey with us. You know, it helped the students that are currently looking, and I know it'll be really helpful for students for a long time to come. So just thank you so much again for all of your time and efforts in putting this together. You're most welcome. I, I love doing this. Thank you so much, Kelly, again for the opportunity. And thank you, Professor, as well for having me here today. Thank you so much, Manisha. Thank you.